Do you want to do a sound check? Testing, testing, one, two. Welcome to Football New South Wales coverage of NPL Men's New South Wales for the 2024 season. We're in Rockdale at Hillenden Sports Centre for St George FC versus Hills United. Yes. Scores, scores that have already happened today. That's going to make me very, very happy. That is me being very happy. So, a half time this one. Jordan Lane on that segues almost too well. <laughs> that that's like that like, like I don't even have to try. That was Luke's son, right? Just checking. Yeah. Yeah. I should have. I, and I also probably asked Tristan and then forgot. <laughs> Wade's in, oh yeah, that's right, we can talk about, that's right, Wade, we can talk about Wade. They're in, um, Thailand, or? There's too many national teams here. And there's like an MWFA junior in each one, so I can't, they all kind of blend into one. Luke's Lopez. Oh, it's, it's, it's obscure.
Maybe a bit rough if they're super spread out sometimes. Yeah. Fills the gaps. <laughs> Fills what he can. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Multi surname check? <laughs> we got it. Multi surname check. Well, it's getting close to the time for beanies, puffer jackets and long johns. The weather's cooling down, but the action's heating up in the NPL men's at New South Wales competition for the 2024 season. And we're at Illidan Sports Centre in Rockdale for a clash between two clubs who got promoted at the end of last season, St George FC and Hills United. Eric Subihano here on the mic in the Illidan Sports Centre scaffold. A very nice place for filming. We've got a great view of the action coming up here this evening. So yes, this is round 11 of the competition. As we head into this game, St. George FC are in 10th place with 10 points. And Hills United, one point and two places behind their host this evening. So 12th place and nine points for the men of the Hills. And for those of you perhaps less familiar with these two lineups, it's traditional colors for both. It's the mainly red jerseys, white shorts and green socks for St. George FC and for Hills United. The yellow jerseys, the, the dark blue shorts, and the white socks. So it looks like as St. George FC are doing one final warm-up before we get underway. Let's take you through the two starting lineups here this evening. Firstly, for St. George FC, in goal number one, Andrew de Blasio. Then number three, Troy Danascos. Number five, Nicholas Calagero. Number six, Patrick O'Shea. Number eight, Connor Quilligan. Number nine, Peter Grozos. Number ten, Harry Jones. Number 11, Anthony Morabito. Number 18, Mark Rodic. Number 19, Nicholas Skatadic. And number 27, Jaden Sito. St. George FC, coached by Ayane Talchevsky. And for Hills United, their lineup is as follows. In goal, number one, Ryan Woods. Number four, Brian Jamba. Number five, Daniel Petkovsky. Number nine, Yu Okubo. Number 12, Jordan Lane. Number 15, Noah Cassily. Number 17, Caleb Jackson Brown. Number 19, their captain, Glenn Kelshaw. Number 20, Thomas Lopez. Number 26, Thomas Macker. And number 27, Nikolai Muller. So we've just seen the pre-match formalities, by the way. Shout out to the 13, the match officials in the center with the whistle, Ivitsakovic. The assistant nearest to us is Alexis Johnson. The assistant on the grandstand, grandstand side is Asia Strutt. And today's fourth official is Jackson Tippett. By the way, shout out to Alexis, Asia, and Jackson. Uh, those of you familiar with this competition will know they did double duty in the 20s game before this one. So they, those three officiated that game as well. And there was some very interesting weather. It was raining sideways at one point here at the Illinois Sports Center. Thankfully, it's all clear in time for first grade. One last glance at the stopwatch from Ivitsakovic. And there it is. There's the whistle. Away we go. So, well, no. Not yet. A false start. <laughs> well, I can't remember the last time I saw one of those, but you know, you've got to kick off properly. And if it's a college, right on top of things, literally before the game starts. So there we go. We're away for round 11 action in NPL Men's New South Wales for 2024. We already, we've had one result already in this round that was actually not too far away from here. Uh, just over the Tom Uglies Bridge at Seymour Shore. And it was a really, really important victory for the Kings from the Northern Beaches. Manly United coming from behind to defeat Sutherland Sharks by two goals to one. And now this race to get away from those bottom two spots in NPL Men's New South Wales, which Manly and Sutherland are a part of. So are these two teams, in fact. And it's really going to heat up and get even more interesting as the season develops. And by the way, actually did watch a little bit of that uh, game on the Football New South Wales YouTube page. By the way, thanks for joining us on said YouTube page for this one, but 
In that game down to Seymour Shaw, a big moment for Manly United youngster, Will Falder, his first goal in first grade. And that was pointed out by the commentator at Seymour Shaw, Alex Molchanov, who did another fine job. Always love hearing Pretty Boy's voice on the Football New South Wales YouTube page. As that runs out, it's the first goal kick. Um, by the way, uh, we'll have enough time to go through the two sets of substitutes. So for the hosts, St. George FC, or Saints, as they are affectionately known, the backup keeper is Daniel Axford. The other bench options are Kyo Degadoy, Jesse Spang, Sebastian Sedacedo, Evangelosaurus, and Justin Poon. While for Hills United, their backup keeper is William Lucas. The other players on the bench, Owen Monford, Anthony Frangie, as that's played over the touchline by Rodich. So yeah, Owen Monford, Anthony Frangie, Cameron Philp, Mitchell Smith, Sunday Yona. And Hills United are coached by Luke Cassidy. What a player he was, by the way. So Lane, an early throw in. And as it's worked into the middle and then cleared away, yes, I wonder if perhaps our effects mics might be able to pick up the wind here. So thankfully, as I said a bit earlier, not as um, squally, is that the right word? It's, is the kind of weather during the 20s game that was really like the sailor's worst nightmare but it's calm enough at least it's not bothering myself it's not bothering justin davies or today's camera operator kate who has the most difficult job because trust me i have taken hold of the npl tv camera for a few minutes and trust me it's more difficult than it looks i'd much rather talk and let other people do the difficult stuff as there's a nice reverse pass from nikolai muller so, left side of the box, Hills attacking. Now, Jamba might have thought about the shot. Instead, he goes and looks for Kelshaw. Kelshaw, one touch past the defender, but that's good shepherding. And so, it's another goal kick. Now for St. George FC, uh, recent results positive. Four wins, a win and a draw from their last two games. So... I think two weekends ago at the venue lovingly known as the Arctic Circle, they defeated Northwest Sydney Spirit 3 1 away from home. A couple of late goals from Peter Grozos, uh, the difference there. Then it was actually a very impressive result last weekend. 2 all draw with high flying Wollongong Wolves, and they actually led 2 0 as well. So that uh, shows you that I think St. George FC looking to grow into this competition. But here's Hills United, cutback options here. And here's the shot. That was Mako making the late run into the box. Well timed. And De Blasio, has he saved the corner? No, he has not. So first corner of the game going to the visitors. And by the way, there was cup action. Um, St. George FC on uh, this very patch of synthetic turf lost 2-1 um, to Dunbar Rovers, although I think that was actually two days before a league game. So interesting scheduling there. But of course... Uh, the, uh, the officiano Nardos know that St. George FC share this venue with Sydney FC and Rockdale, so space is at a premium. As the corner comes in, and that is another corner. Okay, so uh, well done to Nikolai Muller, who's the runner at the near post. He made something out of a very uh, tricky delivery, and the Hills United corner taker will get take two from just beside the flag. Now, it is absolutely crowded in that six-yard box. It's like peak hour traffic. Here comes the corner, and good header away. Kelshaw, and, oh, well, there's a very visual demonstration of the wind. Kelshaw thought he was playing that to the box. It went sideways and even a little bit backwards. Thankfully, from a Hills perspective, it found one of his teammates, and Jambez won the free kick there. Good use of the body. Now, for Hills United, it's a little bit different fortunes at least uh, over the last fortnight compared to their hosts uh, losses in their last two games losing at Seymour Shore to Southland Sharks 2-1 a couple of weeks ago in that last weekend another away game where they lost at the Arctic Circle 3-1 to Northwest Sydney Spirit but uh, they'll be looking to gain some confidence from cup action midweek where they defeated Waverley Old Boys uh, by four goals to do in round four of the Australia Cup qualifiers and I suppose technically an away game but Waverley, Waverley All Boys, the nominate, nominal home team for that game, but that game was actually played at Valentine Sports Park, so Hills United getting a massive favour from the scheduling gods by playing a team from the eastern suburbs and what is basically home turf for them. Goes out near the grandstand side. Actually, good to see is St. George FC, a club that does like to uh, create a whole of club mentality. It's not just about the first grade, so there's plenty of ball kids. 
Um, plenty of ball kids uh, surrounding the playing surface here tonight, so we should be able to have the ball return to play fairly quickly. Although, you know what kids are like at that age, I hope someone's got enough red frogs to keep them on the ropes through the second half. As here's Quilligan, and that's a nice ball to Grozos. He shoots, and Woods planted to the floor, but Grozos is an early sider and an early warning from the man who's scored twice already this season. A great left foot on him. In fact, I think a couple of weeks ago, against that game against Spirit with the Spirit keeper up in attack as they went for broke. Uh, Peter Grozos scored from pretty much uh, on the halfway line or, or even just beyond it as the wind holds that ball up. So you can see you know, Peter Grozos certainly got a lot of quality in that left foot as we saw there. Nice ball for the overlapping Troy Danaskos. Header think from Kelshaw. So both captains getting involved there. Danaskos for Saints and Kelshaw for Hills. Muller. And goes backwards and as Saints are trying to press, Jamba looking backwards. There's not a lot of room for Hills. The press works out for the hosts. Saints going back to De Blasio. Now, trying the side nearest to us. That's uh, an interesting ball there. I think that might be Skatarich. It is, and receiving very close attention from multiple Hills players. Hills come out with the ball. That's Noah Castley. Dispossessed Skatarich. Jackson Brown going backwards to Kelshaw. <coughs> Castley back to Wood. Now Petkovsky, a man who would be incredibly familiar with this part of the world. He'd have run on every blade of synthetic turf here at some point. Daniel Petkovsky, a long-time Rockdale Illidan captain. He's made the switch to Hills United for the 2024 season. And now it's, that's a nice ball, and the flag is up from Asia Strutt on the far side. So that wouldn't have counted anyway. Back to Petkovsky, yes, very familiar to anyone who's seen Rockdale FC pretty much over the last decade. And he was such a fixture in the Rockdale Illenden sides, which were always near the top of the table. And he's decided on a change of scenery and he's settled in nicely to the center of that Hills defense. As Quilligan crosses, not really cleared, and is he going to try the bicycle kick? Felt like Nicholas Scutherich thought about it, but then he didn't get a chance to do the spectacular in any case. Shkatharic again, and Danaskos already running in beyond. Danaskos gets the ball. And Danaskos not technically a left back, but we'll see a lot of him in attacking areas, I'm sure. He does love to bomb on from left back and really uh, support his team's attack that way. <coughs> yes, there is uh, one game going uh, concurrently, or at least one game Another game in this competition that will start soon. That's uh, the other St. George, St. George City. They're hosting Central Coast Mariners at Penshurst Park. That's kickoff scheduled for 7.15 p.m. So that one not too far away. Of course, 7.15 p.m. probably means 7.22 p.m. But, I mean, you know, we know with the majority of teams in this league scheduling seven games starting at 8.30 8 a.m. I mean, it's understandable if things run a little late by the end of the day. Cut back to Harry Jones. Now I think that's Kalajeru, who's gradually moving wide to provide an option nearest to us, but they go left. And Danaskos, cut back. It'll reach Jones, and Jones with the side foot. That's the first save of the game. And Ryan Wood in the Hills goal, comfortable. Kubo's looking to be the target forward. It was Jackson Brown who started to run in beyond. 
Wolves. Uh, those two unable to link up. Now, Harry Jones, the drag back, and they could be in a bit of trouble, so Mark Rodich, very quick off the mark to keep the ball with the home side. Now, looking at those flags on top of the Illinois Sports Center grandstand, they are almost horizontal. You can see the full design of that Rockdale Illinden football club badge. So, you know, shall we say, tricky conditions out there this evening, especially for Hills, who would look to be playing against the wind in this first half. Kalajeru, he wanted an infield option. Instead, he goes back to Rodich. And now, Poon. Now, Damascus. Kalajiru is the furthest forward. I think he's been in free play. And then when you try the combination play, it was uh, Kalajiru, then Quilligan, who was uh, looking for Morabito. The pass was overcooked. <coughs> now, let's play quickly off the goal kick to Petkovsky. Now, Akubo followed very well by Rodic. Now, Quilligan. Grozos has a little bit of space between the lines, and here's Jones. Now Jones, nice ball to Quilligan. Has Morabito, and then again, those two, they're def definitely looking to work together. And we can we have the best view of that in the first half. Quilligan from central midfield drifting a little bit wider to try and link up with Morabito, who is a very quick man. And Hills on that side of the defense would be well advised to be aware of Morabito because he will dart in behind if you're not quite paying attention. This time it's a longer kick. And against the wind, but it finds Kelshaw. He was immediately pressed by Damascos. The two armband rows going head to head. And there is quite a bit of consternation from, Hill, from Hills. And Kovic agrees. Uh, it's a Kovic, the referee. So uh, throwing it to the visitors. Petkovsky tried to cushion the header for Mako. Skips past the tackle. And now is not much space. And Nasco steps in, but now Mako again. Now it's with St. George in the center circle, so tracking back there. Good work was Thomas Lopez. Kalajiri yeah. back to Rodic. And as I think you could hear Kalajiri urging his teammates to Keep the tempo of the passing high and not let Hills get set in defense. But, uh, it's a tough task for Saints at the moment with every, every one of those yellow jerseys behind the ball. You see Grozos dropping very deep in this phase of play. Uh, trying to drag someone else out with him to create space for one of his teammates. Shots from Quilligan, first time ball, nice. Bashkatharic took it well on the chest. Now Morabito and the claims and Ivitsakovic has pointed to the spot. I think that was Morabito who was fouled. And we'll have a shot from 12 yards and a great chance for St. George FC to open the scoring. Now, of course, we'll actually have to check on Morabito's welfare first. It was quite a heavy collision, so we do certainly hope he's okay. Uh, yeah, it was Connor Quilligan. And a shout out to Oh, shout out to League One men's reporter Justin Smith, who's very familiar with Connor Quilligan through both outdoor and futsal. And did tell me, watch out for him as a kind of playmaker. And it was that very nice Connor Quilligan first time pass, which really broke it open, had Hill scrambling, and they eventually conceded the penalty. Now, it's going to be the number 19, Nikolas Skatovic, up against Ryan Wood. Vitsakovic making sure no one is encroaching. No one is getting into the box too early. And here we go. And that's lovely from Skatharic. It's a George FC 1, Hills United nil. A little hop and then very coolly placing it in the bottom corner out of Ryan Wood's reach. That is Nicholas Skatharic's fifth goal of the season. And it's put his team one goal up. Just past the quarter hour mark. It's often a good decision to have your season's top scorer take the responsibility from the spot. Skatharich has delivered.
moment. And despite conceding the first goal, still plenty of time left for Hills, of course. And looking to keep a similar approach, at least when they don't have the ball. They're not more or less letting the Saints centre backs have it before pressing other players. So, yeah, now the pressure comes from Hills. And Morabito gets past two defenders. And it might open up. He's got Grozos on his left. He goes that direction, but to Danascos. Danascos looks up and delivers into the middle. Strong header away from Jordan Lane. Jones. And Jones wants a decision. And he's not getting it. So here's Lane for Hills. And Hills play takes a tumble off the ball. And that will be a free kick. Backwards to Kelshaw, two Hill's most experienced players. And can they provide the impetus to get the visitors back into this game? Lane, you can see what he was trying to do, curl one in from deep, but no, no one really making uh, the run to meet that pass from Jordan Lane. And Saints keeping the tempo high. Damascus again as he crosses halfway before they go back. Right side, Calagero running in beyond Morabito. That's nice play. Does he have the runners in the middle? Calagero, decent cross. And it's headed to the edge of the box. Now Morabito, decent first touch, and he's kept it in play. Now, there's the shot. Quilligan might have been going wide. It was blocked in any case. And Morabito involved again in some of St. George FC's best work. Quilligan, that's a nice turn, and he shoots. It's low. That was a lovely first touch. Almost... He used his studs there to not just control it, but turn the defender as well. They created the space between defensive midfield for Quilligan and a shot that goes wide. Of course, as has been the case for let me see, this season and the last five seasons, I think, in NPL Men's New South Wales. Of course, you can every game is streamed, you know, both live and on demand. We're on the Football New South Wales YouTube page this year and. There are five NPL Men's New South Wales games that you can watch tomorrow on the same platform that you're watching this one. Three of them, oh sorry, four of them at 3 p.m. tomorrow. And hold that thought as that's a nice back here from Scartheridge. And the ball here to Morabito, he's open. And Morabito is denied by an excellent save from Ryan Wood, who got the angle spot on. That's what goalkeeping coaches love. Positioning was good from Wood. He stayed big as long as he could. He's made a vital save because it would have been difficult if Hills... Going to go 2-0 down at this stage of the game. Credit to Skatovic. The invention with the back heel to find Quilligan. And there we go. Justin Smith, he knows what he's doing. Quilligan, once again, being the playmaker for Saints to find Morabito for that chance. As the quarter comes in, Wood thinks that trying to claim it. Goes back on his line. And then Hills need a couple of touches to get it just outside the box. Rosas well is... Yes, Rosas, I think he didn't... He was ex I think he was expecting someone to be in the position for the backwards pass that wasn't there. The touch uh, meant Jackson Brown thought he had a chance to steal it, and he did, but not according to not in line with the laws of the game, according to the referee. So now we can look forward to Harry Jones' set piece delivery. It's decent, but there's a Hills head, and that'll be the Saints' first corner of the evening. Now, so going back to that thought of games coming up tomorrow on the Football New South Wales YouTube page. Trust me, it's taking all of my willpower to not say NPL.TV. May, may that platform rest in peace. But 3 p.m. tomorrow, it's the pride of Western Sydney, and that is, of course, Blacktown City. They've got the short trip to Western Sydney Wanderers at Wanderers Football Park, and the Adonis Will Gotsis will be on the mic there. And there's also Wollongong Wolves versus Sydney FC, Sydney Olympic versus Spirit, Sydney United versus Marconi Stallions, and then 4.30 p.m. tomorrow, RPL Icart versus Rockdale Inlanded. In swinging corner, and the wind, I think, is taken that one up and it swings out of play for a goal kick so from a hill's perspective danger over now 
because as well, <laughs> well it's, a, it's a goal kick procedural disagreement. And now we're back underway with the shortest possible goal kick. Wood rolls it out a couple of millimeters to Jamba and then St. George FC saw that coming and pressed and forced the error. Now, as you see, might have been able to tell with that rundown of games. I love giving shout outs to other commentators. Now we've got a mystery. We don't know who's calling St. George City versus. Oh, Justin Davies, absolutely spot on. Yeah, so I'll shout out that young man in a moment. But here's Skatarich. Ooh. Kind of just bounce, uh, let him down as he was trying to bring the ball down. Now Morabito, pressured by Lane, and they'll keep it alive with Kalajiru. Jones, and he was looking for Skatarich, blocked. Another way, this, yeah, so in the game happening at this time, Justin Davies with some brilliant investigative work as that's out of play by Petkovsky. Yes, yes, it's. Bo Clements calling St. George City versus Central Coast Mariners. And if you've been around the grounds in NPL Men's New South Wales, and um, as Quilligan has that blocked out for a corner by Petkovsky. So, I mean, shall we say pre-COVID years, if you, do you, if you remember the literal child that was um, the ground announcer for Blacktown City back in those days, well, guess what? He's now, he's now a football New South Wales commentator. They grow up so fast. Bo Clements doing a fine job at St. George City versus Central Coast Mariners. Looks like it's going to be the in-swinger from Grozos as he signals. Goes, that's going to be a tough ask for Skatovic. It goes out of play. Now, this time... Looks like Ryan Wood's going to go for distance. And how much distance can he get into the head window? Pretty good kick. Well, well over halfway. Uh, the flick on from Akubo. Uh, Akubo, Hills United's top scorer for the campaign so far with six goals. And then it's to St. George FC's credit that we, at least so, at least so far, have not seen him have many touches position that can threaten to George FC and um, yes by the way I think some over enthusiastic ball kids accidentally kicked a ball onto the field so that's why if it's a Kovic uh, stop that throw in and Andrew de Blasio sending that second ball straight back to them because, uh, we can't have multi ball this isn't a pinball machine although I reckon there's a lot of you I reckon there's a might be a lot of you watching that don't know what a pinball machine is these days but Sorry for that old man reference. <laughs> As Quilligan, another cross. He's, he's, like, he's drifting around a bit, Connor Quilligan, to try and find space. So, so no, I mean, no one is a central midfielder, but he's pulling out to near the right touchline if he thinks he can best create things that way. And now Quilligan, very centrally this time. Now, looking for a run, and it's uh, Harry Jones, in fact, one of the other central midfielders, but the wind and... This quick synthetic service here put pay to any chances of Jones in getting on the end of that pass. Now, I was having trouble getting out of their own half at the moment, and another back here from Skatarich. That one doesn't work out. Hills. Not a lot of room for them to work with. Getting boxed in. And the momentum in this phase of the game looks to be with St. George FC. Hills have quite a few players that can change that in an instant. So this is no time for anyone to rest on their laurels. Goes to Kalajiru, and there's the pressure from Lopez, but he's found Poon. The open teammate. And now Danascos. Now Grosos. And he couldn't return the favor though. Now Danascos is up the field, so at least you know, there was 
There's space to attack for Hills with Damascus up here for a brief moment. Though. That's good pressing in midfield to stop the quick break from Hills. Now Petkovsky looking for options. Jamba. And Jamba um, keeps it away from two players. Now Lopez. And here's Lane. And Jordan Lane with strength to hold off a tackle. And Lane is quick enough as well to keep it. And find Mako. That's better from Hills. And now Kelshaw. He's got a lot of synthetic turf in front of him. There's uh, Nikolai Muller. Roll reversal from what we saw in a lot of the last 10 minutes. Now it's all the St. George FC plays behind the ball. And they stepped up at the right time, able to force the error. So a well done to the home side. <coughs> now Quilligan back to goal, and it's defended well by Casserly. on the run from center back uh, still scanning for options Lopez and then Lopez he has uh, he, he, he was trying to find Jackson Brown but instead all he does is find de Blasio the St. George FC keeper Jeru. Again, he links with Morabito. Now Jones, head up already scanning. Now Jones again getting it back from O'Shea. Now Hills back behind the ball. And Saints dictating the terms. Uh, good tackle from Petkovsky to dispossess Quill again, and then he's won the free kick. It's Hills on the move, and Lane, a little bit of space, although he's quickly closed down by Morabito. Now Lopez up against Kalajiru. Forces appearance over the sideline. Now, let's see. I mean, the wind's going to make it this tricky, but seeing, he's wondering, it doesn't appear that Hills have a long throw expert. Although, long throws would be, well, if you did have a long throw expert, they'd be absolutely awful to deal with in this wind. <laughs> but I keep trying to manifest this, but there, there, there appears to be, not yet anyway, no NPL men's New South Wales equivalent of Megan Campbell, so. Man can dream. Now Skatharich. Nice turn. And Skatharich, did Morabito stay on side? Yes, he did, according to Alexis Johnson. Cut back, and Muller's used all his experience in the right place at the right time. And Hills getting towards halfway with Lopez. Now there's, uh, I think, St. George FC looked to handle that pretty well, forcing backwards passes. Mako's actually, they've actually doubled up on him, but Mako, good technique to keep it in play. Then the ref's happy to let that one go. And it's Kelshaw for Hills. Akubo providing the wide option. And now it's more central with Muller, who's run from a deeper position. He was covered. And it, well, kept in play by Akubo. Here's Muller. And Muller, he crosses. But it's blocked. And there's a lot of red and white in that part of the field. So nicely defended by the Saints. for options found Muller in the end so 
past the hour mark here. If you've just joined us, thanks for joining us on the live tab of the Football New South Wales YouTube page. Eric Sabihana here on the mic from Inland Sports Centre. St George FC leading Hills United by a goal to nil. That goal coming about the quarter hour mark from the penalty spot. It was Nicholas Scatharich's fifth goal of the season. Wind did funny things with that ball. And Kubo in a nice lob pass, but then his teammate just left it behind. I think that was Jackson Brown. That was a bit unlucky from Hill's perspective. But as they press with Lopez, George FC get it towards halfway. And Scott Richoy tried to backheel it around a defender. It's, it's worked. Yeah, that was a nice little treat for the people in the grandstand. And Quilligan trying to keep it alive. Back to Scott Rich. So from very little, it's an, looking to be a nice move. As, the cross is low and side footed away by Petkovsky. Now that will be a Hills foul and a chance for a little bit of a breather. and uh, Mako think possibly it's a difficult to read the hand signals or the on-field hand signals from this distance possibly wanted more movement from his teammates now Petkovsky uh, to play the one-two with Lopez and there's Morabito defending and used his body well the Saints number 11 and Rosos and worked to O'Shea now Quilligan is trying the first time past the Scatheridge Hills are getting in the way but St. George FC look like they'll still have it Scatheridge deeper now near the halfway line but he's done well and the more unheralded work of a centre forward doing dropping deep like that to help secure possession and now we'll get it again tonight's goal scorer nice one too with Quilligan and he's beaten the defender and the pass he was looking for Jones and coming across on the cover is Kelshaw. Now Quilligan from way out. And it's wide. An ambitious effort, but possibly. I think he's right footed, so he tried that with his weaker foot as well. Love the confidence from Quilligan. And it wasn't that far away, in fairness. Difficult technique to kind of strike that one on the ball. Cassily for Hills and it's given away. Might open up. Well, it would have opened up for Skatarich, but it's an excellent sliding tackle. Here's Morabito though, and he shoots it just over. Oh. Saints, I think, kind of in that zone in the Hills half between, kind of halfway between the center circle and the edge of the Hills box. They uh, won a few balls and generally made it difficult for Hills to play through. Their organization in that area helped create another chance. Morabito shooting just over. The signals that he would uh, like to go along with this goal. Kick. Just off frame, I see um, St. George FC subs warming up, and this is the kind of night where you might want to, you might, you might want to warm up without being asked, because. That wind is not very friendly, especially given how warm it was just a couple of weeks ago. But that's a reminder to everyone, the NPL Men's New South Wales is certainly a winter competition. Now, interesting position for this free kick. Muller looks like he'll take it for Hills. Especially against the wind, you don't think it's going to be a direct shot, so we'll try you know, finesse in the chip. But that is claimed well by de Blasio. We go right to Caligero. Uh, once again for Morabito. 
Jones. A lot of yellow jerseys in that part of the field. And here's Muller. Akubo. Gets the shots from Lane and gives Hills number 12 the ball. And Akubo again. Yes, Saints in the way. Hills will settle for a throw in. Right in front of us. And right in front of the fourth official here tonight is Jackson Tippett. Fourth official always seems like a tricky job, especially when it gets heated and you might just have people yelling at you for 90 minutes. Tonight's a different kind of tricky for Jackson Tippett. He can't warm up like the St. George FC subs. He's just got to stand there and get colder and colder and colder and colder. I'm glad he's got a puffer jacket. He'll be hoping for plenty of subs in the second half just to keep warm, I suspect, Jackson. Now, Lopez he goes back to Petkovsky. Chance for Hills to play in the Saints half of the field. It's back to the Hills defense and up to the other side with Kelshaw. Now, Jamba. And Muller. And Cassidy again. And finding Muller. Uh, they look to play some kind of killer pass. He's going to check back. Hill showing patience. He's kind of waiting for the right moment to try and break open the Saints defense, which has looked very good so far. In the 30 mi 38 minutes or so that we've had. Uh, Petkovsky, another run from center back. Now he's directing Lane to where he wanted the ball, but that's Quilligan defending. And, uh, stopping that pass. Kubo is looking to play in Jackson Brown and it's Jackson Brown making it difficult for his opponent and the end result is a corner kick. Now they'll play it short, Mako. As Hills look to do something different, he gives it back to Lopez but that's good defending from Grozos and Grozos and uh, Jackson Brown stuck to the task, prevented a, a Saints counter attack because you know one of my favorite sayings, an attacking set piece is an opportunity for both teams to score. Jackson Brown knew it and made sure it didn't happen. But it might happen now. Ooh, right idea. Decent vision with the round the corner pass from Morabito. And he'll sweep it up. Now, a ding pass. Always interesting to chip passes to your teammates in this part of the field. And St. George FC convinced that they saw a handball, but will go on. Can't quite hear. I think Alexis Johnson is reciting the relevant law of the game at this point, or at least the current interpretation. There we go. That's, that's why they do all those ref exams. So on that note, I remember as I go off a ridiculous tangent to a completely different competition. I remember watching an A-League women game about five years ago, actually. We might go back to that, as that's a nice run from Kalajiru. And Kalajiru, one number five's cross blocked by the other number five. Corner coming up for the Saints. Now it's going to be Grozos. Who will uh, trot over slowly. We're into the final five minutes of regulation time at the end of the first half. It feels like Saints have dominated possession and territory. They've got the goal to show for it. A very crucial time. The Saints try and make things even better before they head into the dressing sets. Actually, it's Jones to deliver, and there's a Saints head on it. It lands on the, the roof of the net. Yeah, apologies, I wasn't quite sure who that was. Might have been Danascos, actually. The Saints captain. Broke free of all those yellow jerseys. And headed, headed to land on the roof of the net. And Jackson Brown pressed by Poon, who'd stepped out of the Saints defense line. Now it's Hills and Muller. Can't find the right pass. Now Morabito. Morabito. There's Calagero to help him out. 
Scotteridge. Yeah. Scotteridge quick passes. There is space in behind the defense if they're quick enough. And Scotteridge will the bounce favor him? It does. He gets to it before lane. Supporting run from Quilligan. And then Petkovsky gets it to temporary safety. But Kalajiru trying to keep the pressure on. Scotteridge might open up for his left boot. And uh, it's, it's an unfortunate one. But he actually rolled the defender well to make the space on his favorite left foot. That's an uncharacteristic. That is it from the man who scored five times this season, including the goal that separates these two teams right now. Danaskos looking for the switch of play and Morabito backpedaling. Read the fly perfectly. Brings Calagero into the action. Now Morabito again. Cuts it back. Who's on the edge of the box? It's Grozos. And Grozos. This is a nice move. They kept it going then. Skatarich, another back heel. Looking for Grozos. Grozos. Oh. He ran into as much traffic as I run into on my morning commute. And that's ended that move. And now Vitsikovic blowing an end to that play just so we can uh, check on his, check on him, make sure he's okay. I think he'll be okay. He's just sitting up already. Uh, Saints Physio is already, uh, already looking at the action, but in fact, they're not, they won't be needed. Well, hmm. I couldn't quite. Yeah. I do try my best when it's at the fast level of the field. Yeah. Both sides were a bit unsure, not sure of what, but anyway, we'll go on. Another Saints attack. That's a well timed pass. And Quilligan, well, the flag's up, so it wouldn't have counted anyway. Alexis Johnson has pinned Connor Quilligan for offside. That's more nice interplay between Quilligan and Skarpovich. Stopped by Alexis Johnson's flag. As we're in the final minute of regulation time for the first half. From Jamba and back to Petkovsky. And as Petkovsky looks to send it in down the defense line, a couple of Saints headers. And one more. Mako. And Jackson Brown settles it for Muller. And see if I remember for once to look at the fourth official so I can see how much time is added on. Trust me, I'm absolutely terrible at this when I call an NPL Men's New South Wales game. Danaskos wins it against Jackson Brown. There we go. So a minimum of two minutes time added on to end this first half. Signaled by Jackson Tippett. So, will there be anything to change the scoreline? Change the scoreline and possibly the two team talks as well before these two teams get into the dressing sheds and away from this wind. Well, we're just a little promotion for another stream coming up tomorrow and particularly relevant if you're actually, let me hold that thought because nice run from Morabito and Morabito to the byline has the support. Who's to touch off last? Off Morbido last, didn't, didn't force anything off Hills. And Hills getting on with it because now there's you know, 60 seconds of time remaining in this first half by my stopwatch. Now Muller pressed by Quilligan. And it's won the free kick. Now Muller. 
feeling a bit sore. I think he'll be okay. And uh, possibly a warning given by Vitsikovic to Connor Quilligan. Bills go on, yeah. Right in the dying seconds of the opening period here at London Sports Centre. And there it is, no more action. So it's advantage St. George FC at halftime in this round 11 NPL Men's New South Wales contest. The Saints are leading Hills United by a goal to nil. A goal came from their number 19, Nicholas Skartovic, who when faced with a penalty was just like the weather, ice cold from the spot, put it, sticking it into the bottom corner. Ryan Wood had no chance with that one. And that's how we got to where we are with the teams heading into the dressing sets. St. George FC 1, Hills United nil. This is Eric Subihano on the mic. Thanks for joining us on the Football New South Wales YouTube page. We'll take a short break, about 10 minutes or so, and then we'll be back for the second half.
This one wasn't too hard to figure out Sunday or not with the jacket off doing uh, quite intense warm up. So, number 24, Pills United, Sunday owner. Uh, you could say we're seeing him a day early, but he will be on the field for half time. And uh, another lesson for me actually pay attention to the fourth official's board so I can see who he replaced. And Yona normally plays out wide, and uh, yes, this is something for St. George FC to keep an eye on. There's uh, this young man, uh, especially you'll know this if you saw him at Bulls FC Academy, Sunday owner, a uh, very very fast man. He's on, replacing Nikolai Muller. So we'll see if that results in any kind of reshuffle. Actually, I think I know what's happening already. Sandayona is going to the left wing for Hills. And Tom, Thomas Lopez has switched from the left wing to the right wing. And Caleb Jackson Brown now in central midfield. If you saw him play at Blackpan City, uh, certainly not be unfamiliar to you. Anyway. There's the whistle from Ivicekovic. Away we go for the second half. By the way, I do have to apologize to one of the St. George FC players because I can't read my own notes correctly. Number 27, the left center back for St. George FC is actually Jaden Seto, not Justin Poon. I'm really sorry, Jaden. That's just that. That's just unfortunate. Uh, but I can think perhaps with two Justins in the football New South Wales riding team, maybe I just I just looked at a Justin and thought, yeah, that makes sense. I'm, my life is surrounded by them. Definitely number 27, Jaden Sito. Now Grozos taking on Kelshaw. He's got the support from Danaskos, so two on one there and a decent cross. Skatric trying to head towards goal, but it's very wide and in the end, an easy task for Ryan Wood. Now, of course, you know, it's good to have a fourth official, and you know, some of the competitions I call don't have it, so now I do know that there's only been one sub, so made and that of course the one I just said for Hills United um so I some might remind you of the two lineups out there once uh, they get them bring it in play uh, they'll do a break and play to do so Jamba Kelshaw inching his way up the touchline nearest to us and Mako and Mako is looking for the switch and it is going to split the difference between Yorna and Jordan Lane. So that goes out. So, perhaps a reminder of the two lineups out there, St. George FC, as they were to begin the game. So, in goal, number one, Andrew de Blasio. Their back four from left to right is number three, the captain, Troy Danaskos. Number 27, Jaden Sito. Number 18, Mark Rodich. And at number five, Nicholas Calagero. Three in midfield. Number 10, Harry Jones. At number six, Patrick O'Shea. And number eight, Connor Quilligan. And three up front. Number 19, tonight's goal scorer, Nicholas Skatherich at center forward. He's flanked on the left by number nine, Peter Grozos, and on the right by number 11, Anthony Morabito. Danaskos, looking for the foul there against Lopez. By the way, the Hills line up there, that's changed, of course. So in goal for them, number one, oh, that's changed at halftime, or at least one change. So in goal for them, number one, Ryan Woods. Hills back four from left to right, number 12, Jordan Lane. Number five, Daniel Petkovsky on the ball now. Number 15, Noah Cassley. And number 19, their captain, Glenn Kelshaw. Three in midfield, number four, Brian Jamba. Number 26, Thomas Macko. And number 17, Thomas, sorry, Caleb Jackson Brown. And three up front, number nine, Ewa Kubos at center forward. He's flanked on the left by number 24, Sunday owner. And on the right by number 20, Thomas Lopez. As Skatarich delivers and Kelshaw. Yeah, nice, actually pretty calmly done header of his teammates and now that will break for Lopez and is there a chance well that's a nice ball with the outside of the boot Akubo is away and will get to this before it crosses the byline Yona's providing the support uh, the red jerseys getting back as quick as they can Yona he will settle for the corner kick <coughs> so Looking at the two benches, I mean, attack is more likely to come on. So if this score stays as it is, I reckon it won't be too long before we see Anthony Frangie and Mitch Smith for Hills United. Jesse Spangs is the attacking option, by the way, for St. George FC. But first, this corner into that crowded six-yard box. And, well, I mean, 
from our angle, that looked very close to an Olympico, a goal direct from a corner. Though, to be fair, the Saints didn't actually look that bothered. So I think we'll give credit to Andrew de Blasio for good goal sense. And of course, the wind is now in Hills United's favour for the second half, looking at those flags in the grandstand. So is that something that might give them what they need or result in a change of approach that could, you know, a further challenge this uh, St. George FC defensive setup, which was uh, very good in the first half, and they, those 10 red jerseys provided a lot of protection for Andrew de Blasio. Uh, Quilligan, Grozos, tucked in field, and that provided the space for this man, Danaskos. Uh, Grozos dispossessed by Jamba, and now Lopez. And that will go back for the free kick, the foul on Peter Grozos, and Vitsakovic is, oh yeah, I think he heard, I think he actually heard Vitsa say, it's just a warning. Now, Lopez, the dub Saints double up on him. And take the ball off him. And there's Sito going back. Blasio again uh, outside of the box to keep the passing move going. Hills, I think they have a chance. They've stepped up to try and press another, yet another Skafarich back heel. And you'll get to this on the grandstand side of the field. He's got supporting runners as well. Jones going in beyond. Flag stays down from Asia Strutt. That's a dangerous ball. Nightmare position for defenders and keeper in between them. But no runner at the far post to provide the close range finish. Glenn Kelshaw plays it behind for a corner kick. Now, Peter Grosos, uh, is he taking this corner or will he leave it for Harry Jones? Yes, he will. So, it'll be the Saints number 10. No, will they play it short? Since I think there was a two on one op opportunity to work a two on one if they're quick enough. No. In fact, they'll just go direct into the middle. It's low to the near post, and it's an attempted flick. And that results in another corner. So by my very unofficial count, four corners apiece uh, for these two teams. The St. George FC plays a little bit deeper for before starting their runs. And the keeper's up, and Wood, he doesn't claim it, helped out by his teammates. That little fumble is not costly for Hills United. In fact, those are quick enough to force the backwards pass as well. So they can step up. I think that's Scutterich on the far side. He's trying to turn away from Jamba. And a Jamba, he read that move like the Hillshire Times. Nice ball down the far side as well. It's a Kubo, but a Kubo that's equally good defending. I think that was Rodic. He's been good in central defense uh, this evening. He drills it across the synthetic turf, and now room to run for the Saints skipper, Damascos. A little bit of a heel chop. And now the ball all oh, oh, just ran away for Skatovic. He'd almost uh, kind of ghosted between those two defenders. I think that move from Damascus is called a hill chop. I don't know. I haven't played EA Sports FC in quite a while, so <laughs> apologies to the kids if I'm wrong. Jamba going back to Petkovsky. Jamba goes back to Castle and it's a little bit tricky for them to play out from the back and then it's Jaden Sito who's given Hills a little bit of respite by giving away that free kick but no further sanction from the referee <coughs> now Jamba finding Petkovsky As the Saints press once more it's Cassily against Skatovich and he does nicely to find Lopez Lopez has won the free kick. 
Mako keen to get on with it. Of course, the scoreboard going against Hills United. Now on the left side, as Hills look at things with Jordan Lane. Yona. Trying to get away from Kalajiru, and that will be another free kick. So very, very gradually, Hills made their way up the field, and now a set piece in a promising position. Thomas Mako looking over and he'll, he'll leave it. He'll leave it for Sunday Yona. Petkovsky's up from the back. So's Cassily. And Cassily scored a couple of weeks ago against Sutherland Sharks. Here's the delivery. It's decent and then it needed the header from Skatharic back defending. It's Hill's fifth corner of the evening. Be Jackson Brown. Another in swinger. Hills players starting their runs, and that header skims off Grozos's head. And another corner for the visitors. Everyone back for St. George FC. Aimed at the near post. And a couple of Saints heads, but doesn't get out of the box. Back will tell short the little first time. He goes sideways to Jamba. And Jamba. I think is that Lane? Sure, but no matter it finds Kelshaw. Saints have stepped up. Now it's back. The Hill Center backs it back, so it's kind of like open play now again with everyone in the positions we're used to seeing them. There's uh, the diagonal, and so I think thumbs up. Jamba liked the idea because he found a little bit of space, but the yeah, diagonal ball not finding its mark. You can see the Hills player getting ready to come on. And right in front of us. Just my fairly reckless guess is that is that's Mitchell Smith, but. Can't, can't quite tell it who it is off frame and through um, the dugout. Now, Saints playing it out from back. Morabito under pressure from Lane, I think. Yeah, there's a lot of Hills plays in that part of the field. They've won it back. Now Jamba. Now we go left to right. It's Kelshaw. Jambi again, keeping himself busy in the Hill Central midfield. And Lopez goes back to Cassidy. Now it's Petkovsky, the man with room. Yona wanted the early ball. Instead, they keep it short. Now Lane. And Lane. There's Yona being forced backwards. Hills staying patient, but also Saints their organization not giving there's anything in which to try and uh, kind of break that defensive structure as Grozos takes a tumble and ought to have been fouled by Kelshaw now we're going to see a sub so actually it's going to be St. George FC making their first substitution of the evening number two is Kaio Degodoy Number 11, Anthony Morbito, and uh, doing us media a favor by uh, leaving the field right in front of us, so it make, makes it very easy to figure out. Makes it very easy to figure out who the substitute player is, just in case I missed the fourth official's board. But yes, that, um, yeah, that'll, that'll be a reshuffle because Kai de, de Godoy looks like he's going to central defense. And Anthony Morbito was a winger, so it might take me a couple of moments to see how Liane Tarpinski and the St. George FC coaching staff have reshuffled this. Good shift for Morabito, by the way. Looked dangerous on the right flank, especially when linking with Connor Quilligan and Nicholas Calagero. So there was some nice combination play between those three players. Morabito's done a lot of running and has uh, he's earned the early mark from his coaching staff. 
now Cito's run into a bit of trouble and Lopez I think said to credit to Jason Cito I think he got the toe in there before Lopez could start the run uh, a center, oh, a center back named Jaden playing for St. George FC. Haven't heard of that since Tory Truman's brother, Jaden, uh, played. That's about a decade ago now. That's well, maybe not quite a decade, but it's some time ago. They, they, they want to try and break him down with short passes, but there's, I think, is that, no, that's Caligero stepping in. He anticipated the pass well, and he's joining the attack. Skarteridge, a step over, onto the left foot, and he's clipped it in. It's dangerous, and might stay in the box. It's not an awkward height. I want to make sure you don't handball it, but Jamba sees out the danger. Wood takes over. Our plate here at Illidan Sports Center. Eric Subihano on the mic here for... Football New South Wales YouTube page, not NPL.TV, that doesn't exist anymore, but St. George FC leading Hills United by a goal to nil. Nicholas Gutteridge's spot kick after about 15 minutes is what separates the two sides. Now there's the pressure coming and it's a nice turn from Mako. Mako wants a handball, but Vitsikovic says that's all okay. And then nice interception from Cassily, and it opens up for Lane. Now yeah, that, oh, well, breakdown in communication as Lane tried to break lines there. By the way, in case you, well, I mean, probably shouldn't say too much, but in case you're wondering what happened to NPL.TV, well, um, the, the, the people running the stream with the small matter of them going bankrupt. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> but hey. We're live and we're free on the Football New South Wales YouTube page. Very easy to watch. You don't even need to create an account. Quilligan delivers. And is there a runner at the far post? Grozos was trying to get there as quick as he could. And he was quick enough to put the pressure on Lane. And it's put behind for a corner. Well, St. George FC retrieved that ball. And just a reminder of the subs that we could yet see this evening. So for the Saints, uh, Daniel Axford's the backup keeper. The others, Jesse Spang, Sebastian Cerecedo, Evangelosaurus, and Justin Poon. And for Hills, for backup keepers, William Lucas. The others, Owen Montford, Anthony Frangi, Cameron Philp, and Mitchell Smith. He's the outswinger, and Saints trying to make a play at that. Degodoy, the man just coming off the bench, was close to it. Hills United in the way. Now, well, flags up from Asia Strott on the far side. And she's pointed in favor of Hills United. It was a nice turn, but. Oh, no, no, no. Throw in. So was, I was trying to figure out what law of the game had been broken there. Now the ball just went out. Okay, that's that's why I couldn't see anything on toward. That makes more sense. So, interesting story, Asia Strutt. Uh, she's she's from Canberra, so she's come up through refereeing at Capital Football. And actually, I think from memory, a couple of years ago, she was part of a historic all women officiating crew for the Federation Cup final, which is of course a big deal down there in the, uh, the nation's capital. And now she's. Kind of one of refs, I think Nathan Shakespeare is another one that's from Canberra, but often referees up here. But as yes, for the next stage of her refereeing career, she's decided to come to Sydney, and uh, we're certainly glad to have people coming in from other areas. And of course, this this incredibly cold, inhospitable weather because Asia's from Canberra. I'm hoping that makes her feel right at home. I, the ball, the jam was looking for Kelshaw, who loves to overlap, hasn't had as much of a chance to do it in this game as I'm sure Hills would have liked. Jamba saw the opportunity but didn't quite get the weight right and well, I mean I could pat myself on the back but it's not much of a prediction to say the two forwards are going to come on next so Hills are about to make a double sub it's Mitch Smith and Anthony Frangie so Frangie scored three times this season Mitch Smith yet to uh, open his account for 2024 but um, those of you who 
I saw him play, especially in the second tier, where Mitch Mick does have a good eye for goal. As Yona with the pace, and then try to trick on the byline, it didn't work out. So goal kick, and opposition goal kick sounds like the perfect time to make a sub. The Hills coaching staff agree. So, Lopez, number 20, is one of the players coming off. So that Anthony Frangie can come on. And the other sub, Yuakubo, will make way for Mitchell Smith. How, how will this work out? I think Hills have reshuffled their front three. So Mitch, Mitchell Smith at center forward. Sunday owner now on the right wing. Anthony Frangie on the left wing. And Frangie from memory, a right footed player. So he'll be looking to cut inside onto that right foot from the left flank because he also has a, a very threatening long distance shot. Now Hills want a free kick. It's a Kovac agrees and we're going to see the first slice of cheese for today. I'm trying my best to see who's gotten booked. Uh, I think he's facing Peter Grosos. So uh, Saints number nine at first into the notebook. And Justin and I just kind of confirming that with each other because, of course, um, yellow cards part of the reports that you'll see on the NPL New South Wales uh, Facebook page later tonight. So Justin Davies working on that as we speak. And, of course, shout out, as always, to the Golden Greek, Mark Stavrilakis, for staying up late to make sure make sure that uh, these are up as soon as possible and yes he did say it was okay for me to call him that and i love a nickname so i couldn't wait to refer to our fearless leader mark stavrilakis with such a nickname now four in the wall set by andrew de blasio and frangi off the bench and perhaps about to test my theory i've just talked up his long distance shooting ability. We've seen him score spectacular goals over the years in this competition. That's what Hills need. Here we go from Frangie. He hits it into the wall. And the header and the clearance from Danascos. Now, space in behind. Mitch Smith is going to try his hardest and he'll get there, I think. So Smith out wide and crosses far post. It's over Frangie. And out for, I think that's going to be a throw in. Yep, a throw in right by the corner flag. So, I mean, if ever you had a long throw specialist, this is the time to use it. But, oh, yes. by the way, if you, for those of you that are familiar with my commentary, I mean, or you could just take it from 15 meters in front of where it went out. But, um, <laughs> I see a Nicholas Calagari, but, <laughs> as you're wondering, um, who is this Megan Campbell I keep referring to? Google, Me Google Megan Campbell long throw and be amazed by the Republic of Ireland Women's International who can throw the ball, who can throw the ball 40 meters. It's incredible. Now, Lane clearing that and briefly worrying a couple of spectators, although. So that could have been more dangerous if it was a Rockdale home game and they have the beers flowing. So I've actually I've actually tried the Rockdale Illinois Lager available at Rockdale Illinois home games at this venue. Would highly recommend it. Yeah, I'm not just here for football. I'm here to talk about the, the whole experience of watching games at NPL grounds. Some, some people would say it's because I can't read a game of football. Those people are haters. Anyway, there's a St. George FC sub about to come on. Number 23 is Evangelosaurus. And now I think this is the time that the home team wants. So Evangelosaurus is going to replace Harry Jones. Decent shift in midfield. A couple of threatening set-piece deliveries from Saints number 10. Now he will be replaced uh, midway through the second half. Well, throwing keep one eye on Connor Quilligan in back play. He's been, he's been pulled up a bit. Oh, yeah, now he's jogging back into position. 
And uh, Saints might need them because they're on the move, although there will be this set piece more quickly from Scarther, which hasn't just been the penalty he scored, which is the reason Saints are leading by a goal to nil, but been a very tricky customer for Hills to handle this evening. Some brief self-promotion of at least one game, which is a game I'm calling tomorrow, and a game which should interest some of you because it involves the Hills United women's team, who are currently flying high top of League One Women's, the women's second tier in New South Wales. They're playing against Blacktown City, so it's a derby. That's 4 p.m. tomorrow at Landon Stadium. Blacktown City versus Hills United in League One Women's. I will be calling that game, and I'm absolutely thrilled that they gave me a game that I asked for. So, eventually. I mean, couldn't say yes to that email quick enough. Back to this Hills United team. And the set piece, it's struck and it swings wide. So I think they are um, Nicholas Skartarich, the man who won the free kick, took it. And there's some uh, bend and power on it, but nothing to trouble Ryan Wood's goal. By the way, spoke about one's women's stream that's on tomorrow. Might as well talk about the rest. And it's and the women's action. Available on the Football New South Wales YouTube page starts at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Yes, there is a first grade game at 9 a.m. tomorrow. It's the Battle of the Kids Football New South Wales Institute versus Emerging Jets from Valentine Sports Park. That'll be called by Dave McDonald, and um, Dave McDonald will need, to, he's already told me he'll need quite a bit of coffee to call that game. So, or he'll, or he'll, he'll need my normal amount of coffee consumption, one of the two things. But yeah, 9 a.m. tomorrow, Institute versus Jets and NPL Women's New South Wales. The other six also being played tomorrow, so 4.40 p.m. It's Bulls FC Academy versus Illawarra Stingrays from Northbridge Oval. That'll be called by Annabelle Banfield, who I recently learned is an Interlions under-20 player. So good on her. And uh, yes, it's a player and also part of her commentary team. So following in Megan Drew's footsteps. Uh, also, I mean, I could talk about my favorite Interlions player of all time, but maybe I shouldn't. Anyway, now... <laughs> Four NPL Women's New South Wales games at 5 p.m. tomorrow. Hi, Justin. So, big one on the Northern Beaches. It's third versus second. The Queens of the Northern Beaches, Manly United, taking on Sydney Olympic. Also at 5 p.m. tomorrow, it's a game I like to call the Tory Tumuth Trophy, Sydney University versus RPL Leichhardt from the Sydney University football grounds. Then at Linwood Park, it's the champions of the last two years, MacArthur Rams, and their coach, the incredibly good-looking Stephen Peters, Facing one of his former sides, Blacktown Spartans, as Yona crosses, and it's well tracked by Jaden Sito and blocked. So MacArthur Rams, Blacktown Spartans in the women's comp, 5 p.m. tomorrow. Also at 5 p.m., University of New South Wales versus Northwest Sydney Spirit from the Village Green, called by William Constantin. He's, he's a great young commentator. And then at the really odd time of 5, 10 p.m. tomorrow from the Arctic Circle, Gladesville Ravens versus Northern Tigers, called by the Serbian Martin Tyler, Nikola Pozda. I got that in just before the corner. Well done, me. Here's Kelshaw with the delivery. It's drilled, and De Blasio read the flight. It's kind of a different one. I think Kelshaw almost striking it with the outside of his foot. I've talked about the wind a lot tonight. De Blasio has got that trajectory spot on, and into the gloves it goes. Now, just looking at the live table on my score up, because, I mean, me doing maths on the fly, good luck with that. But if this score stays, uh, St. George FC would be up to ninth on 13 points. And it'd be five points clear of the bottom two. So. I'll show the importance. This result of the United just one point out of the bottom two. And they should fall to 13 for uh, the current stores, scores. Sorry, as low as they are. There's also, as uh, you, if you missed this when I said it, at the top of the broadcast, down at the bottom. And whoa, there's a, an off the ball scuffle between Kyo de Godoy and Mitchell Smith. Uh, oh, geez. Very off the ball. No, no idea what was happening there. Ivetsakovic has an eye on everything. Now, yellow card, yellow cards for Degoy and Smith now. This is where they'll have to, yeah, they, Hills want the free kick, but I believe the ball, it was a dead ball because Kelsha was about to take the throw, so it can't be a free kick. It'll restart with a throw, whatever happens, but I think Ivicekovic having a chat with Alexis Johnson, assistant nearest to us, just to kind of clarify what the decision should be. Has already shown a yellow card to both of the protagonists, shall we say. And yes, two yellow cards. Vitsakovic, very experienced in this, in refereeing this competition, by the way. He needed every, or all, all of that experience to sort that out. And I think it's going to just, the situation is going to just about be diffused. Vitsakovic, by the way, his referees from the Northern Beaches, so came up through Manly Ringer Football Referees Association, and you know, lots of 
Lots of good things come out from the Northern Beaches, though. So it's a very big association. The biggest association, the biggest local football association in Australia. Yes, Sutherland. It's Manly Warringah, not you. But and yeah, it does create, does have a lot of referees. I'm thinking other Manly Warringah refs, think Jackson Mackey, his sister Rebecca, that used to do this comps before she moved up to the A-League women competition. There it is. Very important to have officials. There's the ball from Cassily and the touch from Jackson Brown. Now Sunday owner, good speed. He's surrounded by three players. The Godoy had to be spot on with the tackle in the box. Yon actually um, was quick enough to close down the clearance. And well, who was that off? Yona didn't keep that in, but uh, ruled. Last touch was off St. George FC anyway. About, half, about quarter of an hour left here. And yes. Starting to get a little bit tense, as you'd expect, with only one goal separating the two sides. That penalty coming, that goal coming from the penalty spot after about 15 minutes from Nikola Skarkovic. I guess you're wondering why I pronounce it like that. Well, I decided to copy what Nikola Posta does because I feel like if anyone can pronounce that surname, it's him. Or right, pronounce that surname properly. Open up for Frangi and he'll go from range. Anthony Frangi, of course, is a nice save out of De Blasio. There's that long shooting ability. It opened up nicely for the Hills number 11. And he had St. George FC's keeper at full stretch. Corner kick coming up. Also, I mean, maybe I should look at my phone there less often, but I can see from friend of football New South Wales coverage, Megan, who's apparently she's enjoying a very nice Savlaki at Penzo's Park. I must remember to try that at some point this season. Anyway, corner's coming up. It's aimed far post and bending away from everyone. Mitch Smith couldn't keep that in play. Godoy going long. So I just need to take a drink of water, but Kelshaw is shepherding that out. And Justin Davies finds something funny. Definitely wasn't my joke, so I oh, might have to ask him later. Ah, yes, yes. I understand now. It's going to be Kelshaw and Nick Ding to Cassily, but then the touch gave Skatteridge a chance. And Skatteridge has won the corner. And this goal would be massive. Uh, Manley's win earlier today uh, took them away from the bottom two and ahead of believe if my life score app is correct ahead of Hills on goal difference. Hills have enough time yet to turn this around. But first they got to see out this corner which comes in from Grozos. Decent delivery but that swings away from everyone and Jamba will have room in front of him assuming he can keep it in play. Yes he walks the tightrope does Brian Jamba. Smith Two ex teammates at North Shore Mariners trying to link together. Jackson Brown fighting for it. And he's always a keen competitor, Jackson Brown. And now Smith, that's a nice ball to Frangie. Frangie. Frangie almost lost his balance, but he's kept the ball, kept it inside the box. And now just, I think, not waiting numbers. He wins the day for the Saints, and there's a free kick as well.
wind has done de Blasio absolutely no favours. So he like hit a wall, just stopped. And now it's with heels. It's the finesse ball. It might break for Jackson Brown. He could, couldn't react to that Degadoy clearance quick enough. It scrambled away, but just in the last couple of moments, of course, that's what subs can do. They can change a game. Hills looking like a little bit more likely to uh, trouble the scoreboard now. I think we're almost into the final 10 minutes of regulation time. Yeah. Of course, um, Kai Degador is a good option to bring off the bench, but it always is tricky when you have to rush up on your backline mid-game. Degador at central defense. Jaden Sito now at left back. Slightly changed Saints defenses up against a uh, reshuffled Hills attack to finish this game. Yona, they double up on him. And Jaden Sito doing very well to get the touch off Yona. And well, oh no, he didn't. No, he didn't. If it's a coverage overall, just remember it's play to the whistle, not play to the flag. Now, Oh, that's lovely from Grozos. He's gotten past three. And there's the supporting run. Nice one, two. Grozos into the box, but Jamba stuck to the task well, finds his goalkeeper. Now Danaskos, he loves marauding forward, even at this late stage of games. Now they go back. Skatovic. Paid close attention by two Hills defenders. Hooligan. Hooligan bouncing it off to Nascos. Uh, back to Quilligan. Of course, it's not, Saints aren't the ones that need to chase this, so they can just hold the ball for as long as they like or, as, or until Hills take it off them. They want to score a second, but I mean, I'm sure St. George couldn't blame St. George FC for thinking of game management at this stage of the game. Sorry? Okay. Yes, uh, thanks, Justin, for pointing, uh, pointing out that there will be another sub coming on. Um, well, we, of course, go beer bond, we can't see the shirt number, so I think we'll try and speculate this time. No, Justin thinks it's it's his fellow Justin, Justin Poon, the man who inadvertently had his name called several times in this first half, because I can't read my notes properly. Uh, would Hills make a sub as well? Uh, nice, you might see Owen Monford possibly might be coming on. Actually, up here. Yes. It's a while that is yet not quite identified St. George FC subs getting instructions from the iPad or whatever kind of tablet that is. Yes. It might seem unnecessary, but it was actually at um, the under-20s game between Sutherland and Manly earlier today as Ranji is bundled over and will win the free kick. But yeah, I was watching, you know, it was very windy down at Seymour Shore and then Sutherland had these, their instructions on laminated sheets and then they blew out of someone's hand and into the Manly technical area. So, um, Manly did. Manly didn't. Um, Manly were sporting and didn't look at said instructions. But it was like I was like, they just handed it straight back to them. But yeah, maybe, maybe that's why you need an iPad these days. <laughs> so. <coughs> so anyway, look, getting ready to come on. Oh yes, Justin Davies was right. It is number thirty, Justin Poon. That will be the next player on for the Saints, and Cameron Philp and Owen Monford will come on very soon for Hills United. But first this set piece. Ranji dinks it. And the keeper doesn't hold it. And foul on the keeper. That'll be and the blast here. Well he can't continue without the keeper, so they're gonna need to they're gonna need to sort that out. And Mitchell Smith. Now Davies can't just rely on my reckless guess, but I reckon Mitchell Smith is the one that got booked. Oh no. Now, apparently, he's telling me he's already been booked, so, well, I mean, I've made several mistakes tonight, so that's one more. Um, yes. Yes. Oh, well, that's a, that, the identity of that latest yellow card is a Justin Davies problem, not a me problem. Anyway, yes, uh, yeah. 
So Glenn Kelshaw and Thomas Mako have been replaced by Cameron Philp and Owen Monfort. So while Connor Quilligan gets a little bit of an early mark, he's replaced by Justin Kuhn. Staying high. So this phase of play is part of the attack for the Saints. Owen Monfort's gone into central defense, so that means Noah Castley's gone to right back. But Cameron Philp is a straight swap for Thomas Mako in the Hills central midfield. Now, a good run from Poon. Of course, that's why you want fresh legs. Off the bench, he's found some space. He has support in Scartheridge, but Poon is able to play a safer pass to Damascus. And Poon, oh, he's just lost his footing. That's unfortunate. Hasn't given it up, though. And going to make it tricky. Did he win the ball cleanly? Or, uh, everyone keeps falling over, but Vitsikovic is happy to let things play. Now, Scartheridge, very tight angle, and plays it across the box. Who was that off last one? Yes. Right across the face of goal. And he was after, quite a bit of scrambling. Finally have it in their possession. Yona, Jackson Brown. Yona runs going on, but there's a oh, oh, restricted the space. That's very nice defending from the Saints. Castle decides to switch the play to Jordan Lane. Jordan Lane, very much part of a Hills United family. Shout out to, shout out to his sister Imogen as well. A long time play with the Hills United women's team until this year when she joined RPL Leica. Yes, Imogen. Oh no, actually no, we don't see her play tomorrow. I just said she visit RPL. You'll see Imogen play for RPL against Sydney Uni in the game at Sydney University Football Ground. In, Danaskos back to the fence, gets it just outside of the box. But Yona shoots and Danaskos, that's smart. He knew where he was, knew he could duck out of the way. Good positional sense from the Saints captain. But uh, Mark Rodic calling for one final push. Uh, he have had more impetus at least in the last 15 minutes compared to other parts of the game. And uh, Mark Rodic imploring his teammates to stay uh, switched on. He finds Poon. Here's Poon across the box. Oh, he does this find Monfort with nice ball and another nice, um, nice little cameo from the substitute there, Justin Poon. Now, long range effort, and that will dip in time. But Brozos, oh, I mentioned, he's already scored from halfway this season. Certainly capable of troubling keepers there. Shot is just a little bit too high. So now, dying minutes of regularly. Regulation time. Not sure how much stoppage time they'll be yet. I guess. I feel like we'll see at least four. Uh, some time added on. Saints are almost there. And they love another goal to make it a little bit more comfortable. And target forward play from Nicholas Cuthridge. That resulted in a free kick. And Daniel Petkovsky has gone into the field. based options for St. George FC at this stage of the game. You can't blame them. Shot the Vecito now. Poon. Oh, there's Soros, but Soros couldn't find it. Damascus is on team overlapping right now. All eyes on Alexis Johnson, but he keeps a flag down. And there's room for Mitchell Smith. Low cross, and it's uh, between his teammates. Saints get the ball out of their penalty area. Damascus. Long and 
Misha Strzok keeps her flag down. So it's just a few. And Scutteridge on Modford. We'll talk about Scutteridge. Looks to be a sore one for Scutteridge. And we'll check on him. Set piece. By the way, sorry, Justin, did he, did that one want to get booked? Did you see it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. And of course, because uh, Modford got booked, so Scutterich does not have to leave the field for the next phase of play. Given that the physio's come on. And we're just about at the end of the 90 minutes, so Jackson Tippett has some board work to do in a few seconds. Actually, well, for the signal right now. Now, board's going to come out. And it's good to see Schutterich has gotten to his feet. In four minutes. Okay, so I was, I was spot on. I got something right tonight at least. And might, to be fair, because this four minutes of time added on the minimum, of course, mm, might be a little bit more than you know, 240 seconds because he started it with Schutterich on the ground. Although now he's going to take this set piece. A look, another back here. And then they bring Asuras into the play. Asuras trying to keep it alive. But now, Quills, do they have the room for an attack? And it was Pat O'Shea who held Frangie up long enough to not only get the ball but win a free kick as well. <coughs> you know, just for those of you that don't look at the dribble app while watching games because it, uh, it's only freaks like me that do that. Just wanted to clarify. Owen Monfort, his name is spelled E-O-I-N, the correct Irish way. Just wanted to point that out. <laughs> anyway, don't give me this O-W-E-N. <laughs> and um, as Justin Poon, a nice speed again. Might try, try and go all the way. Instead, he's found a Scotheridge. By the way, speaking of Hills United players with Irish names, shout out to Ashling Davidson, who you'll see tomorrow. 4 p.m. on the Football New South Wales YouTube page when her Hills United team take on Blacktown City in the League One Women's Match of the Round. Yes, Justin, I've been working on that all week. Now, <laughs> and just like what we saw from Owen Watford, Ashton Davidson can put in a crunching tackle or two. I'm looking forward to seeing that tomorrow at Landon Stadium. Just one more as that, um, you know, you touch the roof of the grandstand for a moment. And now, well, Oh, I love that. I absolutely love that from St. George FC. <laughs> Hills put a ball onto the pitch and then St. George FC play, put a second ball onto the pitch just to slow it down. Love the dark art. That is, that's magnificent. Oh, I'm so happy. I, I'm so happy I saw that. I don't know if the cameras did, but. <laughs> oh, that makes me so happy. Like perhaps. Concentrate, still got a few more minutes to call. And oh, for those that want it back, there's not a lot of time left. And in fact, this is the time. Yep, it's that time of every game. Justin Smith packs up his laptop. I'm sorry, Justin Davies. I've done it again. I, I, I do that all the time. I'm sorry, Justin Davies. But yes. Uh, well, I'm not going to call the offside because the ball never got to the player. Now it goes to Sunday owner. There's the nutmeg, but. Sito helps out Damascus, and oh, it's going to be a free kick. So I hope Justin Davies is paying attention to what happens next while he walks pitch side to get quotes, to get quotes from the coach, coach's post game, which you'll see in his match report. And you'll see on the NPL New South Wales YouTube page. St. George FC put a second ball onto the field again, and then the Hills United substitute has had quite enough of that and just kicks it into the synthetic warm up area behind the goal to our left. And we're almost in keeper up territory. Uh, St. George Ball Kid has put a second ball onto the pitch again. Uh, we won't, we'll go on anyway. Attacking it at the far post. Touch of St. George FC, was it? Uh, Vichakovic says yes. So it is absolutely kitchen sink time for Hills United if they're going to get anything from this game. Caleb Jackson Brown in a hurry now. Almost everyone up. For Hills, certainly everyone back. 
for the Saints. Lots of shouting. It's a decent ball. And it's hit the crossbar. And Hills can't turn it home from the scramble. We almost had an Olympico from Caleb Jackson Brown. The Saints have survived. <coughs> And Davies waits patiently to enter the field of final half oh, full time so he can get close from both teams for this match report. And we'll go on, yep. Four and a half minutes of time added on plate. Keep an eye on Vitsakovic to see when he starts glancing at his watch, but Peter Grozos is fouled. And a second yellow. That's going to be a second yellow for Daniel Petkovsky. So Hills will see out the remainder of this game with 10 players. In fact, Davies was signaling to me who it was, but yeah. So it's an unfortunate end for the Hills United number five. Very enterprising run from Peter Grozos, who uh, wanted to take risks to try and score, didn't want to play it safe. He's won a free kick. So now very much into the sixth. Scores. He's got to play it eventually. He does. Now the shouts to go to the corner. Jamba will not to have fouled. Shkatovic there. Jamba is looking to get it somehow towards the goal. Danaskos has done well there and won the throne as well, but it won't matter. That's the full time whistle, and the Saints will go marching on to their second win in three game, three league games. They've defeated Hills United by a one goal to nil here. That goal came in the first half after about 15 minutes when Nicholas Gatovic very coolly converted a penalty. We have to say the Saints will be pretty pleased with their efforts here. In a very keenly fought contest between two newly promoted teams and they ended up being the winners by a goal to nil. So just one last shout out to streams coming up tomorrow on the Football New South Wales YouTube page. So there's four NPL men's New South Wales games at 3 p.m. Uh, the, the team they call the pride of Western Sydney, Blackhand City, have the short trip to Western Sydney Wanderers. So it's a short trip to Wanderers Football Park to take on Western Sydney Wanderers and their super, the Wanderers super coach Andrew Christensen. So Wanderers versus Blackhand City, 3 p.m. Also at 3 p.m. it's Wollongong Wolves versus the Sydney FC Academy, as well as Sydney Olympic versus Northwest Sydney Spirits and Sydney United 58 versus Marconi Stallions from Adensa Park. At it in Park Forum, that will be the Russian Simon Hill, Alexander Molchanov. One is also a men's game tomorrow at 4:30 p.m., which is Arthur Leichhardt from Rockdale Illington from Leichhardt Oval. And if for some reason you like my commentary, I will be calling the League One Women's Match of the Round from Landon Stadium at 4 p.m. tomorrow. Blackham City versus the League One Women's Leaders Hills United and their superstar keeper Sarah East Hope. So 4 p.m. tomorrow from Landon Stadium, I'll be calling Blacktown versus Hills in the women's. But for now, this is Eric Subihano signing off behalf of our camera operator Kate, Justin Davies, the reporter, and everyone in the Football New South Wales media team. Thanks for your support, and thanks for joining us on the Football New South Wales YouTube page. Wishing you plenty of good vibes, great copy, sick tattoos, razzlers, and hope your chosen penalty taker does gets the job done. Hope to see you soon. See you next time.